What's up everyone? We are back again with another tier list maker talking about V Rising. Today we're going to be talking about the ultimates and we're going to rank all the ultimates and talk about the ranking and get into all that. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, as a reminder, this is just my opinion. If you think some things are better than I think they are or worse than I think they are, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And also I want to state that it's hard to make videos like this, uh, especially in terms of PvP because there's so many different factors. You know, 1v1, no dual servers versus open world grouping, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is going to be a more general PvP list. I'm going to try and encompass both those trains of thoughts. I'll definitely lean more towards like open world raids, like actual PvP. And I'll explain how like some things could be higher ranked or lower ranked depending on that. But overall, this is going to be you know, more general focus, more me talking about it. And second, I do want to say that I think every ultimate can be good. I think every ultimate has a build that you can make re look really good and make that ultimate, you know, like an S or an A tier. Um, so do keep that in mind if you're like, hey, well, I got this this one build that has this blood type and I use this and it's really strong. I'm, I'm sure that's true. I, I have no doubt. I think that I'm sure you're right. So don't think that me putting something in the D tier means that it's garbage, trash, and never be touched. Um, it's just something that probably is more realistically just harder to actually make work effectively and maybe lackluster in some ways compared to other things. So keep that in mind as I go through this and I'd love to hear your thoughts on my ranking as a whole uh, down the road. But without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to go in order. That is given to us here. Um, just kind of go through them, chat about them. First things first, we got Fallen Angel. Now, when I first started playing the game and I got the Fallen Angel, I thought Fallen Angel was the cream of the crop. I thought this was the best ultimate you could have. And while I still think it's really good, I've noticed that I've gotten more experience and played against better players and myself gotten better as a player. The faults that it has, especially more so in terms of like the AI tracking. I think the core idea of Fallen Angel is really good. I think what it provides is another element to a fight. You know, the um, the, the debuffs it can provide and just everything is really strong and really potent. Um, however, I think my fault with it falls more in like with the AI tracking, get very finicky, not track well, sort of focus on things it shouldn't focus on, maybe not even focus on anyone at all. And so there's issues with that side that makes it kind of fall down on my list. I think if I ever fine tune and make this a much stronger ultimate, but for the time being, it's going to go in the C tier. Next, we got Volatile Arachnid. Now, this is a really, really good PvE ultimate. I want that to say, actually, we learned this trick a few nights ago, and we actually got to use it last night. Uh, if you ever fight the Werewolf Chief boss, when he summons all the workers to feast on, you can pop Volatile Arachnid and literally, like, kill all of them, like, instantly, and then he can, like, heal, which is really cool. In PvP, it's really strong in raids, uh, because if you have those kind of close quarter hallways and everything, you can kind of drop them down, and it's really easy to kind of force people to have to go through that. In more open world or like duels it's a bit harder to make work well um so just keep that in mind but i think this is just a solid b tier where it has the potential depending on situations what you can use it for and your builds with it could be incredibly incredibly strong but also if you use it poorly or just like um aren't we're using like a more niche build that may be able to work with it it's a bit harder to pull off and so i think it's just like a staple b tier is really good now going next we got mirror strike mirror strike has some of the best damage i actually think it's the highest damage ultimate i could be wrong on that that's just top of my head either way if you're able to have someone stay in it the whole time you will chunk their hp it's really good you can't really get hit while doing it it's just a really strong staple safe ultimate however the cast time with it gets a bit hard to make sure you actually land it and it is something that enemies can just kind of walk out if not dash out with relative ease so that's just something to keep in mind it's not like a guarantee just like really really strong no like very very like foolproof um but i think it is a top tier in fact a tier ultimate now we're going into Spectral Guardian. Um, Spectral Guardian, you kind of summon the golem, acts as a shield with if you're in the kind of range of it, which is really nice, as well as it kind of uh, you can deal some damage, kind of act as like a as another unit on the field. Very similar to the Fallen Angel aspect. I think it's better than Fallen Angel because it's less reliant on it focusing and AI tracking, more just like being a presence that you can surround yourself with. The AOE around that can get a bit hard sometimes for people to see clearly, and the shield it provides is really nice. So I think this is top of the line b tier ultimate i keep going back and forth this you know top of b tier it could be bottom a tier for the time being we're gonna stick b tier i think it's really really strong i just wish um i think it could use a bit of a buff to be honest i think it's just like solid as it is i don't think it's broken i don't think it's weak i think it's just kind of solid but maybe it could use a bit more um with it but overall top of b tier maybe bottom a tier is where we're gonna put it for now 
Now, Chaos Barrage. This is one of those ultimates I was talking about at the beginning where there are some builds and some niche situations that if you're able to make it work, it will hit like a truck. However, it's really hard to make work. Um, the projectiles can be reflected. They're kind of dodged with not too hard a difficulty. You're stationary. We're doing it. So they could just get out distant. Open world, it really, really struggles. Duels, it really, really struggles. Raids are the only things I kind of see it work a lot. Um, but that's just from my personal experience. Maybe you found a situation that works better. Um, so it's one of those things, again, this is not a bad ultimate, but I think it definitely just is something that's a bit harder to actually make work and be useful and just uh, is less exciting for me. So it's actually going to go in the D tier. Up next, Merciless Charge, the first ultimate you get in the game. You get it from Quincy. Um, People sleep on Merciless Charge. I think Merciless Charge is solid. I think it's really good. The stun is really good. Um, the mobility provides both offensively and defensively is really, really strong. Um, however, it's something you have to have be able to kind of like combo with. Like you got to really be able to use that stun with something else. Um, so it's a bit more niche in those regards. Like it's not something that you just can slap on like any build and just be good. It's definitely a more like it works good with no running this combo. Maybe the spear with the Q afterwards or this or that or frost. Um, so it's a bit more niche and not just like generally strong. However, I do think people kind of just sleep on it. I think it's a really, really strong ultimate. Um, but because of its flaws, um, this is another just kind of staple uh, B tier. I think it's not as strong as Special Guardian, but I think it's better than Volatile Arachnid. So it's going to go there for the time being. Now, Arctic Leap. Arctic Leap did receive a nerf in the most recent patch. It was 225% damage. Now it's 200%. Um... However, in open world and everything else, it's still really strong. I think the 25% damage was nice. And the fact that you can't do like the knockback for the second frost. Now, if you guys haven't seen, you could like immediately, if you were to like land on them, if, like right point center, you could like Q with the Reaper and knock them back so they get frozen twice and take the damage twice. Now that that's gone, that also kind of knocks it down a bit. But that was such like a high level, like if you know, you know type thing. However, like in open world PvP and everything, if you ever get an end cap or a slow or anything, if you hit this on a group, it's really, really strong. Even if you just hit on one person, there's just so many things you can do with just the raw damage and the follow up. But like in open world PvP, it's hard to really beat this. So I'm going to keep it in S tier. I do think potentially because of the nerfs, it might be like a top of A tier, but I still think just the versatility it provides and just how big it is just for raids and for open world is really strong. So I, I, I don't want to sleep on it. Even in duels, um, you know, in terms of like 2v2s or 3v3 duels, it's still really good. So we're going to keep it on the S tier for the time being, but I do respect the fact that the nerfs may have hurt it a bit. Next, we got Frost Vortex. I, I don't like Frost Vortex. I know people like it. I'm sure this is going to upset some people. I'm putting it in D tier. I think it's really easy to dodge. Like, really, really easy to dodge. Especially if you have any dash up, you're, you're, it's, it's like you have to be asleep at your keyboard to get hit by this still. Um, otherwise, like, it's really strong if it does hit, but it's just, it's so easy for people to get out that I'm just, I'm not impressed by it. Um, so I, I think it's quote unquote the worst ultimate. I it does have potential in our circumstances, like especially with raiding for like defending a raid, it's really good. If they have to walk through like out of the honeycomb you're gonna be, you can drop it. It might be hard for them to get out. But overall it's I it just feels so lackluster compared to others. Second to last, we got Crimson Beam. Um I like Crimson Beam a lot. I think it's a really good support. I think it's one of like the like better PVE ultimates you can run. I think for uh, raids and even some open world fights, depending on just like the team comp you're running, if you're running no duos or trios, it can be really good. Solos would never recommend it because you go stationary, but the healing and the damage is solid. I definitely think it's underappreciated, but um, because it's, I, I think it could use a buff. I think the, the the health you get and the damage you deal could be better for the fact that it's really slow to change the angle on, like really, really slow, and you're stationary in it, so people kind of just dash backwards or usually have a good chance of getting out, and if they just dash to the side, it's hard to actually chase them. So because of that, I think it could use some quality of life buffs or just a raw damage or health buff. Um, so it's going to go C tier. I think it's a little bit better than Fallen Angel, just a little bit more consistent, um, but maybe not. It kind of goes, these two are kind of interchangeable, so it's hard to say. And then lastly, Heart Strike, the final ultimate. I think this is the best ultimate in the game. I think the damage is good, especially if you can line up. I think it's versatile and no duels or in raids or in open world. Just the mobility it gives, the health it gives, the damage it deals. I think it's just really, really strong. I think it's much easier of an ultimate to make work um, that has just less like need to make it like 
perfect. Like there's just so many builds you can use this in, so many situations you can use this in. Like you're never going to struggle with the health uh, that you get back or the damage that you deal or anything with it. I just think Heart Strike um, is like the cookie cutter best ultimate in the game right now, in my opinion. So um, yeah. And with that being said, these are my now, uh, rankings for the Ultimates of E-Rising. Let me know again your thoughts in the comments down below. If you like this content, be sure to like and subscribe. Check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash If you want to share your own tier list, um, this is in the um, this is linked in the description below. And you're happy to share, uh, share it in my Discord if you're interested. And with that, hope you all have a fantastic evening. Peace out.